true story. Mom and I uh, had gotten voted in with uh, a church, and the church pianist was uh, not able to be there for the vote uh, that evening, but uh, uh, we were aware that she was in a neighboring community in the hospital. So after the morning service, Mom and I drove over to the hospital there in this, uh, this neighboring community. And her name was Doris Cunningham, precious lady. And uh, we went in, and she uh, said, uh, uh, you're the new pastor, aren't you? And I said, well, I, I think so, maybe tonight. <laughs> and so uh, uh, we prayed with her and just visited for a little bit, and we left. And, and so uh, in the ensuing uh, two or three weeks in the time frame that it got us uh, uh, there to uh, the church, uh, she was able, of course, to get out of the hospital, and she was took the animals. And so uh, on the first service that I'm there with the pastor, and, and she came up to me, and uh, she looked very seriously into my, to my face, and she said, I really don't think I'm going to like you. <laughs> well, that made me feel good. And so she walked away, and praise the Lord. Well, a couple of weeks later, she came up to me, and she looked at me again, and she said, Brother Mike, that wasn't a bad sermon at all this morning. <laughs> I thought, I thought this, is, this is getting better. Yeah. I hope. And so about a month later, she came up to me with her fist, balled up, and she got right in front of me. And she said, Brother Matthias, that was the best sermon I've ever heard. Praise God! Hallelujah! You know, we kind of wear on people. I want to wear on people to be a good place. Hallelujah. Not bad. Praise God. You got your Bible? Uh, if you don't mind, uh, those that can, would you stand with me just for a reading of the word? Very, very short uh, uh, passage of Scripture. Uh, Jude chapter 1, uh, verse 1, 2, and 3. Chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. There's only one chapter in Jude. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. How many are servants of God this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. To those who are called, beloved in God, the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. That's God's heart. For the people of God. Hallelujah. Beloved, although I am very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in, I notice, who long ago were designated from this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Uh, Brother Vincent, can you pray over the word this morning? Hallelujah. Glory. Then shall the Son of Man come. 
You look at uh, Matthew chapter 25. You look at the parable of the ten virgins. The truth of that great parable is for the people of God to be ready. Amen. To be ready. To be ready. And so day to day as we are into our word, as we pray, and um, as we're uh, looking at uh, taking this uh, uh, time to be involved in seven days of continuous prayer. What a what an effort to know that we're not only going to pray over different matters, but in that attitude of prayer, we're going to have our heart always in condition before God to be ready for that momentous event that Jesus said he will personally come back and receive you and I. All believers around the world a friend of ours said it this way. A time zones won't make any difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of Jude was written to, not, to remind the church of the need for constant spiritual vigil. Concerning the truth to keep strong in the faith, our personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that he goes on to say that we're to contend for the faith. Someone asks you a question about the Bible, we're supposed to be ready to give an answer. Someone wants to oppose Christianity, they happen to want to try that opposition against you. You and I need to know the Word of God, that we can come back and give God's truth to them. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to tell you something about the former pastor many years ago. I may remember the name Haskell Rogers. Ah, yeah. Someone after service came up to Brother Rogers here at First Assembly. And he said, I don't believe in God. Now, how do you know that Brother Rogers had a way of being funny but serious at the same time? Hallelujah. And he told us the story. And he said, I looked at that young man. And he said, You think God cares? <laughs> Hallelujah. Scripture says that if people don't believe God, he will never ever deny himself. Hallelujah. We're to keep strong in the faith. Heresy. Heresy. People have beliefs and opinions that are contrary to Christian doctrine. Give you an example of one. A person says, I believe you can be a Christian without believing in the resurrection. Wrong. Hello? We must believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ to be saved. Hallelujah. We must believe, the scripture says in Romans chapter 10, that God raised him from the dead. It's out there, folks. There's heresy. There's error. Jesus said that there would be false teachers, prophets. And he went on to say that there would be those appearing claiming to be Christ. We've had those in recent times. So we stay in the Word. We stay in the Word. We stay in prayer. I'm sitting there on my pew and more when Amanda's bringing this up about the seven uh, days of prayer. And I'm thinking, this is great! This is wonderful. Hallelujah. So true. Says in verse 3, give you the title, the Bible description of God's great salvation. The scripture says, he speaks of a common salvation. He says, I find it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend for the faith, which was once and for all delivered to the saints. And Jews use, listen to this, Jews use of the words, our common salvation is not words used to make salvation seem less than what it is. It is Christ's love. But he's inferring that salvation is universally available to everyone who would hear and believe. Yeah. This common salvation is, meaning is it's available to everyone. 
she for God so loved the world, meaning people, that he gave his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he should believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. God saying to him, it's for everybody. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. You're here this morning. And if you've not received Christ as Savior and Lord, it's for you. It's for you. Hallelujah. Salvation is for all. Yet each person, each person who hears the right message of his salvation must personally choose to receive God's salvation. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, a person can work next to a believer, a Christian, can eat a meal with a Christian. What I'm trying to say is, is that another believer can be close to a believer, but that's not what they're saying. Amen. That's not what they're saying. Hallelujah. The thief on the cross, one of the thieves on the cross, he was close to Jesus, but he didn't have to say He was hanging next to the door to heaven, but would not enter in. He was hanging next to the giver of life, but chose death instead. He was hanging next to the one who was living water that chose not to drink. As Jesus was on the center cross, dying for the sins of humanity, one thing he chose to die in is he chose not to receive Christ in those dying moments. Hallelujah. You know the other one? You know, the other one's just as bad as, as the other one. In fact, as they go to scriptures and they, they both revile Christ. They verbally attack him. They hang on the cross. They verbally attack him. But I, I want to believe that that one thing, that one thing hurt Jesus a few minutes earlier when they were nailing him on the cross. He heard Jesus cry out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I wanted to believe that those words began to go over and over in that thief's mind. And then he said to the other thief, he said, we're here because we deserve to be here. Our bad deeds is what brought us here. But this man's done nothing wrong. And then he looks at Christ and says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, this day, you'll be with me. Why are you bringing that up? I'm bringing that up. One thief was very close just like the other, but he chose not to receive Christ. The other thief chose to. One thief died in sin. This thief died forgiven for our sin. If you're here this morning, maybe you need Christ. You need Christ as your life. Hallelujah. Salvation is for all. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3 talking about the Bible's description of God's salvation. Hallelujah. It's a great salvation. It says this, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Salvation is great because it saves us from our sin. You and I, before we got saved, we, uh, I, this, is, this, is, this is just for exaggeration, but it could be true. Or not. We had quasillions of sins in us. Come on. You know, we hadn't got to the point of salvation that we just, oh, you know, sin here, sin there, you know, no, no. We had a total number of sin. Could you have been But salvation. Coming to Christ. Scripture says. For all the sin. Now people take issue with, with you on that. They have me. Romans 3 and 23. For all the sin comes short of the glory of God. Romans 6 and 23. For, all, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Salvation is a great salvation. It's 
for all people. Why? Because we stand and we need a, a Savior to forgive us. That guy told me, found a witness to me, and he said, look, I'm not a bad guy.
salvation is eternal. I know that you know this. The original plan for humanity was eternal life. God created Adam and Eve, they're in the garden. At that point in time, the plan of God was broken. Adam and Eve would live eternally in fellowship and love with God. And you know the story. You know what happened. God gave them a word, gave them a command. He said, you're, you're, you can have all that you see here. You can partake of all that you see here. He'd already given them a tradition that, that the, the animal, animal kingdom was, uh, was uh, under their feet and so on and so forth. Tremendous blessing that God gave. But then God said, there's one tree that you cannot partake of. If you do, then that day you will die. And you know the story. They did. They, at that moment in time, they began to die spiritually. And they died physically, eventually. And so that sin was passed on. That, that sinful nature was passed on to humanity. Let me say it another way. You don't have to teach a child how to do anything wrong. Come on. You don't have to teach a, a small child to be selfish. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Tell you what, I do this occasionally. You see a small two-year-old, maybe, about three or what, and he's got candy in his hand. You say, can I have one? Nope. <laughs> or they'll start to hand it to you and take it back real quick. How many's done that? <laughs> Try it sometimes. I'm not talking about selfishness. You don't have to teach a child to lie. You don't. How many of you lie to me or something? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> you don't have to teach a child to steal, to lift something and put it in. You don't have to do that. Why? Why do people lie? Why do even children do things they should? It's a sin nature. It's a sin nature. You know that. And I know that. And the, and the good thing is, we are saying that that sin nature has been changed by the glory and the power of God. We don't want to be selfish. We don't want to do those things. Come on. We don't want to tell God things that are not true. We want to do the right thing by the help and grace of God in our lives. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, humanity has a great problem. Jesus made the way. For all who can believe and receive the gift of eternal life that we read from the scripture. Christ said this, John 17, 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Believers today in our world are being martyred because of this verse. Let me read it again. Oh, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God. And Jesus Christ, who thou hast sent. I know this is kind of a heavy question to put out to you this morning. But folks, if we were put in a position to deny Christ, or to say, someone to say, well, there's another way, you don't have to believe it. Would we stand firm and say, I believe in Jesus. I believe he's saved. I believe God is going to receive me into heaven when I die. Hallelujah. But today, in our world, people are dying, being martyred for their faith in God because Jesus Christ. I talked to an Arabic man one day. Of all things, I was trying to sell him a car. Amazing the people God allowed me to run into when you're doing a good thing. And I 
Jesus said to the disciples, As God the Father has sent me, so send I you. We're people who can leave. We can get up and turn a life. And as a mission in life, we are his sent people. Some receive a specific calling for missions. You know that very well. I was looking at your mission board the other day, and I want to say thank you uh, for the great uh, efforts, the great vision the church has uh, of supporting and praying for mission, for missionaries. Hallelujah. That's commendable. Uh, uh, the great financial backing that this church has come alongside the missionaries and, 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 and compassion ministries and so forth uh, to get the gospel out to people uh, that really, really need to hear it. And we want, don't want to uh, short circuit this right here in London. Right here in London. Come go with me to First Assembly. Well, where's First Assembly at? Ninth Street. Hallelujah. It's the church with the big dome. No, I call it a dome. Well, I've been by there a few times. Well, come on, stop. You're going to find a bunch of people who love God, who love me, and who love people. First Assembly of God Church in Crete, Alaska. Never been to the church until this early. It was a Wednesday night service. I, 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 I've been there that Sunday, but I've not been involved with the youth group. Well, what happened? I got out of the car with the people that brought me. And the youth group people were, were starting to arrive at church. And this one guy saw me, and he come walking over to me, stuck his hand out, big smile, welcome to First Assembly. And I immediately Felt the love of God in that young man's life. Felt the love of God in the youth group. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I found what I was looking for. Praise God. A great place to worship God. I'm talking about Bible description of God's great salvation this morning. Hallelujah. It's for all. It's for all. Hallelujah. It's for all. Hallelujah. It's for all. It's a great salvation. God made a way for us to find forgiveness of our sins, being sinners. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's made a way. He's made a way for us to be revived. The requirement is to receive by our will, our choice, God's salvation. Hallelujah. Paul put it very simple to the point when he said this. Repentance of sin and faith in Jesus Christ. If we go that route, God's route, God's way, he'll save us, he'll forgive us of our sins, he'll grant us eternal life and eternal life. You see, every one of us here that are here as believers, we have the gift of eternal life residing. And the reality of that is when we go on 